Hey everyone, my name is Paul, and today I'm changing the fork seals and oil in my Chinese scooter. The first step is removing the front fender and plastic. There we go. Fork seals come in many different sizes, so we must start by measuring. My stanchion diameter is 31 millimeters. Let's pry that dust wiper up and measure the diameter inside the fork leg. The new seals must be 43 millimeters outside diameter. The height of my dust wiper is 13 millimeters, but that's not very important. The sizes are also stamped into the seals. My old oil seal is 31 millimeters inside diameter, 43 millimeters outside, and a height of 10.3 millimeters. The oil seal is held in by a C clip, so the height needs to be close, but it doesn't have to be exactly 10.3. My dust wiper is 31 by 43 by 13 millimeters. Since it sticks up out of the fork, the height is not important. I found a set of Moose Racing fork seals on eBay. 31 by 43 by 10 millimeters are the dimensions of the oil seal. The wiper is probably taller, but it doesn't need to match the oil seal. And here they are. Don't just go buy the same seals as me. Measure your fork first. They could be a different diameter on your scooter. The top cap takes a 12 millimeter Allen key, but the bolt is stuck. I added a wrench for leverage and held the fork with a jack handle to break it loose. The front brake comes off next. Remove the two long bolts holding the brake caliper holder and the smaller bolt that holds the hose. Slide the disc brake off the rotor. On the left side, remove the speedometer cable bracket and place a 14mm wrench on the axle. The axle nut takes a 17mm socket. Remove the nut and slide the axle out of the wheel. Drop the wheel straight down out of the fork and pull the speedometer puck off. The forks are held in to the clamps by two bolts on each side. Open the clamp slightly with a small pry bar to let the fork slide down. You can also use a flathead screwdriver for this. Remove the top bolt. It might jump a little because there's a spring behind it. Pull the coil spring out of the fork and set it in a pan for cleaning. Pour the old oil out of the fork. This oil is 10 years old and really bad. It's been leaking too, so there's not enough oil. Clamp the fork leg by the flat part that holds the wheel, then insert a long 10mm allen key to hold the damper assembly inside. Use a 6mm allen key to loosen the lower bolt. It's a normal bolt, so turn it counterclockwise. It looks like I'm going the other direction, because the bolt is upside down. Pull the bolt out and catch the oil that comes out of the fork. Now I can pull the stanchion out of the fork leg. The piece that fell is a holder for the damper. Let's pull the dust wiper off and push the damper out using my long 10mm allen key. It's time to clean all the parts before I put this fork back together. You can find brake parts cleaner at your local auto parts store. If you're a motorcycle guy, you might have suspension clean laying around. That's even better. When you have the fork apart, check for damaged parts. If anything is bent or broken, or if the stanchions aren't smooth, just go buy a new fork instead of fixing this one. They're cheap. Use a small screwdriver or a pick to remove the C-clip that holds the oil seal. Pry the seal out with a flathead screwdriver. I want the fork leg to be perfectly clean, so I'm using blue paper towels to wipe out the inside. They're pretty good because they don't leave much lint. You can also use a microfiber towel, but don't use the red shop rags because they shed a lot. The fork stanchion has a polished surface and must be smooth for the seals to work. If this part is damaged, replace your forks. The damper slows down the up and down movement of the fork. It has a seal and oil must flow through small holes in the middle. This prevents the spring from bouncing like a pogo stick. This damper has no physical adjustments, but you can speed up the rebound and compression by using a thinner viscosity oil, or you can slow it down using a thicker oil. I found a new o-ring for the top cap on partsforscooters.com. The wire wheel works great for cleaning the lower bolt. Install the new oil seal with the metal spring facing down. Press it in with your fingers, then use a large socket to get it the rest of the way down. The C-clip prevents the seal from popping back out. You should be able to get the dust wiper all the way down with just your fingers. Generously apply slick honey to both seals and fill in the space between them. 
For the next step, let's clamp the 10mm Allen key in the vise, pointing up. Add a little bit of slick honey to the damper seal and set it on the Allen key. Drop the small spring over the damper, then install the stanchion over it. Wiggle it to get the seal to go inside the tube. Push the stanchion down so the damper sticks out and stack the holder piece on top. Finally, install the fork leg over everything. I don't have a new seal for the lower bolt, so I'm adding silicone to prevent my fork oil from leaking out. Get the bolt nice and tight, then flip the fork over. Move the stanchion all the way down for the next step. There must be enough oil to completely submerge the damper. If you don't have enough oil, the damper will get air in it and you'll have a bouncy ride with no compression or rebound damping. Too much oil will make the fork feel stiff and you won't get all your travel. Slowly move the fork up and down about 30 times until you get most of the bubbles out of the oil. The oil is about 1 centimeter from the top with the fork all the way down. Extend the fork and install the spring. Grease will prevent the o-ring from being torn during installation. Install the top cap. I'll tighten it more when it's in the scooter. Spread the clamp slightly with a small pry bar and make sure the top cap is barely above the clamp. Glue the Chinese scooter back together with Loctite. Tighten the bolts, and it looks like that lower bolt is stripped. Nice. I'm installing a longer bolt to catch some new threads farther into the fork. Okay, that's better. Now let's tighten the top caps. Don't be alarmed by the jack handle on the end of my wrench. I'm only getting as much torque as I can hold with my other hand. Install the front axle from the left side of the scooter and make sure it's sitting flush with the fork. The wheel has these two cutouts that go into the rotating bit and the speedometer puck. Turn it so it lines up with the wheel and make sure it snaps all the way in. You'll have to hold it the whole time so it doesn't fall off. Line up the wheel and push the axle most of the way in. Don't forget the spacer on the right side of the wheel. Now the axle can go through the right fork leg. Add Loctite to the axle threads if you don't want to die while riding, then thread the nut on. Put a wrench on both sides of the axle and get it nice and tight. Give the wheel a good spin and make sure the speedometer works. Don't forget the speedo cable bracket. Gently pry the brake pads apart to push the pistons back into the caliper a little bit, then slide the caliper over the rotor. Add Loctite to the two long brake bolts, then tighten them down. Don't go crazy tight because they're soft metal and will break. Get it? Because brakes and the bolts will break because it's Chinese. Pull the brake lever a few times until it feels firm and the front brake works again. Okay, I'm all done here. Remember to route the brake hose through the slot in the fender and tighten all three bolts. Finish assembling the body fairings with as many screws or as much duct tape as needed. Replacing fork seals is a medium difficulty level, so if you're good at fixing stuff, this should not be a problem. You will need a long 10mm Allen key and a fat 12mm Allen key to do this job. And keep in mind, measuring the fork seals is perhaps the most important step. Fork seals come in many different sizes, sometimes just one millimeter apart from each other. So you must get an accurate measurement in order to get the right seals. That's all I have for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.